and welcome back to some more Pokemon Black 2. No healing in battle. Revenge Rainbow Wedlock. In the last episode, we made our way north of Undela Town for the first time onto the longest road in all of Unova, being Route 13. And obviously, Route 13, it has some... What would you call that? It has some... What would you call that? When it's like... Saying something... What is that called? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when it's 13th, Friday the 13th. I'm blanking harder than I've ever blanked. Everybody's screaming what I'm talking about. What is that word? All I can think of is hypothetical. Give me a second. I'm Googling it because I'm losing my mind. What's that called when it's not a real thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'm sad. <laughs> I wanted to start this so good. Friday the 13th. Black Cat. Skeptical. Theory. <laughs> I've got nothing, man! What do they call it when something... Hey, Mom! Come here real quick! What do they call that when, like, Friday 13th, Black Cats... What do they call it when it's not true? Superstition! There we go! Okay, you can go now. I'm gonna continue. Okay! Yeah! Superstitious is the word I was thinking of. It's Route 13, so we were scared because it's the longest road. It's 13. Obviously, it spells trouble. So to add to that, I tested a face cam randomly because we were going to be a bit unusual. 13? I don't know where I'm going with this. I named a Pokemon Johnny 13 in the game we're getting revenge on being white too. I did that. It was a Litwick. Which, yeah, anyways, <laughs> in the last episode we did all that, I tested the face cam, you guys loved it, but we didn't finish Route 13, so it's not over yet. Things could still get a little bit crazy. Do I believe in superstition? Not really, but you never know. Only time will tell. Anyways, there's this cut tree right here. Let's, yeah, I'm so mixed up now because I couldn't think what that word is. Anyways... We, I'm not doing the face cam anymore for this series. It was just a test, but I'm glad you guys really enjoyed it, and the reception was great, and that means a lot to me. And I've read all your comments. Don't worry about that. And just, it means a lot that you guys were supportive of it, and it was just tacked on for a one-time thing for this series. But in the next series, who knows what we're going to do. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyways, we have this series to focus on. This cut tree. I don't want to teach cut to one of my Pokemon, but I did actually do it off screen with our Anorith Ramba. And went to see what we have back there. It's a max repel. That's kind of sad. Honestly, that's it. That was the only thing back there. Not really a reward worth teaching cut to one of my Pokemon to at this point in the game. It's kind of ridiculous. We're almost out of repels. We're going to need to buy them. It's just, I was going to say, wait, we just got a max repel. But I was going to say, wait, what if that's a max repel? That'd be funny. Oh, now we need strength as well. Don't I have it? I don't have strength on my team. That's unfortunate. We're gonna need it? No, we're not. You see, this sucks, because I did this off screen with cuts. So I wouldn't have to do this on camera at all. But I suppose, let's teach strength to somebody. We could always get rid of it. It's just a kind of a hassle. We're not gonna teach strength. That item, I will get off screen after the episode and do what I did with Anyways, <laughs> we did not take down all the trainers in this route. We took down a lot of them, but we never actually did the surfing part over here, which I guess we can start this episode off with. And we also didn't take down Cobalion, which is going to be the big threat of this episode, at least in my mind right now. There might be a trainer that's a bigger threat. Only time will tell, of course. But let's go ahead and surf, because as I mentioned last episode, I believe there's a guy up here with a Starmie. Which, if that's the case, I guess Gushers is fine, who is up front. And I want to get Gushers to level 45, because that's the level Cobalion is. And I figure since Gushers is going to fight Cobalion, she might as well be in his best shape possible. I think that Fisherman would actually spot me while serving on the water. And there's also a Fisherman right there. I could have swore there was like an Ace Trainer. There's nothing on that island, huh? 
I could have swore there was an ace trainer over here with like a Starmie. Maybe he's on this island. No, this is just where you get TM29 Psychic. No, this is a luxury ball. I'm forgetting everything, apparently. This is where you... Is there a hidden item on this? No, it's over there. All right, which I probably already picked up last episode, but it's been a few days. Okay, bear with me. I think this guy has a Starmie. We're going to fight him with Gushers and grab TM29 Psychic, which is a really good TM. I didn't need it because the Pokemon that would have Psychic... Shocker already has Psychic, so <laughs> it's not the most useful thing in the world for our team right now because I wouldn't want Marcus to have it, and like I said, Carly already does, so we don't need it right now, but it's good to have because I don't need a Heart Scale now to reteach it to Carly should I ever need to swap some moves around, which is unlikely because if I was ever to delete any move of Carly's, it wouldn't be Psychic. Like, that's like the one move I'd never get rid of, so it'll probably stay on her forever. Meaning, as of right now, the TM's fairly useless. Let's see if Vince actually does have a Starmie and a hidden immunity idol. But anyways, we have a Golduck, which isn't quite Starmie, but I'm certain Gushers can fight it. And if I recall, <laughs> there was a Golduck in Reversal Mountain that used a Water-type attack on Gushers, so... Yeah, I'm not really concerned. You're gonna raise my special attack, and I will then in turn use that special attack to hurt you very badly. The Skullduck is going to feel an immense amount of pain, because that's most definitely gonna be a one shot. And that'll also get Gushers level four. What? You kidding me? That's that's cool. Aqua tell me. Raise my special attack some more. The AI's not too keen on this one. Which makes me wonder. I wonder if Gushers would be good for Marlin. I mean, probably not <laughs> for Catherine or pretty much anybody we have right now. Yeah, everybody else would... Nah. Catherine, obviously. But that's a long ways down the road! And we have Drayden's gym and a lot to take on before we even consider getting to Marlin. So, let's not think about that. Because we need to have Gushers survive until then. And uh, we have better options, hopefully, by then. So, the other trainer we didn't fight last episode is this girl. Now, I didn't know what she had. I forgot what she had. Uh... But <laughs> my Discord server is talking about it because a couple of people, I think like two or three people in my Discord server actually lost a Pokemon to this girl. So we're not going to take this one too lightly, okay? We're going to do it with Carly. Is that a good idea? I know what she has. It's probably a bad idea considering November is the partner. November would outspeed a cast form. We'll be fine. Oh, no, Carly has the experience share. So here, Brooklyn, you take that. Carly gets a shell bell? Okay. I mean, I don't really care. Personally, Carly should be fine to fight a cast form. But there's a reason that this cast form is so deadly. Give me this item. Excuse me. It's a big pearl. That's lovely. There's a reason this girl's so deadly is because her cast form is not like any other cast form. It has fire blast, apparently, which is ridiculous in many different levels. Obviously, it could miss, though. So... Let's just hope I one-shot it, because I'm fairly certain I'll outspeed it. It's only level 44, so it's equal level with everybody else we've been fighting, and equal level with our team, aside from Carly, which is kind of unfortunately, but we should outspeed, hit it with Psychic. I don't think we'll one-shot it, but I should be able to tank any special attacks that we throw. We did one-shot it, so there we go. Cast Form has been avenged. Oh, everybody who has lost a Pokemon to that Cast Form has been avenged, and we have gotten our revenge on the Cast Form. And a Parasol is a must on the beach, apparently. I mean, in the sand, right? You're not supposed to carry it around. You carry it around till you get to your destination. Also, this is the tiniest chair I've ever seen. It's so cute. Can you imagine if you could sit in these and it just kind of like made you like sit diagonally and look out into the... I'm, clip I'm clipping into her parasol. You see this? Help, it's raining. <laughs> I need under there. Okay, yeah, I didn't go over this way either, which I don't... Ooh, that's not a trainer. I'm willing to risk it. Yeah, he's not a trainer. I knew he wasn't. He's a, a fun fest mission guy. Or maybe not. He just gives me a black flute, which I have no idea what it does. But he gives you stuff every day, apparently. Probably all the flutes, but I don't really have a need for the flutes, unfortunately, for... We'll name him Todd, because apparently Todd's been a name that I've been fascinated with in the past few episodes. But what does the black flute do? It just sells for money. That guy in Undella Town, isn't it? Dare I? Yeah, I dare. Let's just give it to him right now. Yeah, he's the guy that buys it. $8,000. That guy in the beach was a fool. Okay, let's go ahead in this house and see what this place has to offer for me. Uh, there's a cool looking pan pour. What's up? 
Chatier! <laughs> oh, it's what Twitter could have been named. Instead of Twitter, you could have named it Chatier. Chatter? <laughs> Chatter wouldn't have been a bad name for Twitter. It's like, oh my god, it's the Pokemon world equivalent of Twitter. Like, Pokemon doesn't have Twitter, they have Chatter. Get it? Because of Chatot. <laughs> That's actually the coolest thing. Got anything to eat? What's up, dude? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what about your Panbor? He's really annoyed about Team Plasma. His Panbor doesn't listen to him. It's unfortunate, bud. I've been through the obedience struggles myself in the past with a young Meowth named Eugene. It's a sad time, really. Okay, let's hop on the water and skip those fishermen. We'll come back to them in a little bit. I feel like fighting a Zebstrika, because I think you can get up there from here. Or no? Is that not the case? No, you just go around. Let's, let's, let's myth bust here. You will spot me while I'm surfing. This is true, Non. I'm certain. All right, we'll do it with Carly, because, like, I know Biasculin's a thing, but come on. Oh, I can talk to him. That's cool. Maybe he ain't spotting me because he doesn't care. He's just fishing, right? He doesn't want to be interrupted with his fishing, of course. Damon. But, yeah, it's a Biasculin. You know, it's a bad thing. They hurt me badly <laughs> with a thing called crunch, but I probably can kill them in a single shot. This is a risk, but I want Carly to fight and not just do everything with Catherine. Even though now I'm thinking about it, last episode, I fought a Vaporeon with Carly, and I said, I'm going to do it the hard way, and it was scary, and I was like, all right, next episode, we're going to do these guys the easy way. I'm not doing it the easy way, though. I'm still doing it the hard way. Although, he doesn't have two masculine, it's just a star you. And the next one, I will humor past me and do the easy way with Catherine. Will that make everybody happy? It will satisfy the world and the imbalance of me not doing what I said I was going to do last episode. Like, for, like, a week ago, actually, at this point. So, you know, you can't blame me for forgetting or anything like that. Although, I remember this girl said well it's not hard because when somebody says i lost a pokemon to their cast form in fire blast and then somebody else is like oh, i lost my pokemon to a cast form in a fire blast you start to panic internally a little bit like oh no i better watch out for that cast form that has fire blast although the only pokemon on my team that would be bad against that would be november because i'd have to switch into carly but gushers would take fire blast fairly well i'm gonna do it the easy way let's put casper in up front and fight the other fishermen, and then we only have one more trainer before Cobalion, I do believe. We have this fisherman, and then a ace trainer down the way. Or maybe a ranger. It's a ranger. That's right. And that ranger is most likely a rotation battle, because the other ranger was a triple battle. The girl power we showed off last episode, where we did a triple battle with three of our girls, and it was very scary. So I'm concerned that this guy is going to be equally as scary. Rotation battles are slightly easier, of course. This guy just has a Lola Mola. It would have been fine to fight with anybody, honestly. Nobody on my team's weak to water, so anybody could fight a Lola Mola, even if they were weak to it. Let's just discharge it. And it should be a one shot. It's possible it survives. It is a Lola Mola. They're fairly tanky. But it's doubtful. Yeah, we're Catherine. What's up? So speaking of electricity and discharge. I'm concerned that the other ranger is an Electro-type trainer. I don't actually remember, but I know the ranger we fought last time was a Fire-type trainer. It had a Flareon and uh, Larvesta, which was scary. Now, I doubt this guy has Fire-types as well. Let's check the Hidden Grotto again. There was a uh, Fungus. This was where we got our encounter last episode, actually. We got ourselves a Fungus. There is a new item already. A well, new thing. The Stable Mulch. It's unfortunate. I hate to see the unstable mulch, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just grow like nuclear plants coming out the ground. But yeah, there's only one more trainer to fight. He's down there. I just have this gut feeling. I recall him having what we call a Zebstrika. And that's what we call a scare me. So we're going to go ahead and put Gushers and Brooklyn up front. Which isn't good because Gushers will have to do everything by herself. But we have rest. Uh, if it is a rotation battle, of course. Um, if that's the case, Brooklyn lead would be better. Intimidate. And, yeah, it's fine. Uh, we'll do Brooklyn lead. Gusher's in the middle. Catherine? I guess, because we could Volt Absorb. I feel like that's a really good plan. Who has the experience share? Carly. That's fine. Okay, I feel comfortable with this. We'll be able to Intimidate whatever they lead with, which hopefully is a Zebstrika. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling as good as you can, honestly. Knowing that other Ranger caused me... Pretty bad emotional damage. 
Is that actually it? Yeah, that's the only other trainer. And we got this house. Let's check out the house first. And then we'll fight the scary ranger. Yuck! No, I hate that thing! Get it out of here! Please, I'm begging you. What is it? It's a wingall? Delivers mail? We get a power lens? Are you serious? Isn't that the EV training thing? I have no idea. I don't remember. Is it? Yeah. It's the special attack one. That would have been nice when I was training Carly. Uh, what do you have to say? Pokestar Studios? She's a big fan of Stu? That would be so cool. To bring him here? I have to use the bathroom. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. I really hate saying that because I feel like it's TMI, right? Like, nobody really wants to hear about that. But the commentator and the creator side of me is like, well, I don't want to just cut here randomly right before a scary potential death trainer, right? And then have people questioning why I decided to cut right there. No, I had something I shouldn't have ate earlier. <laughs> and I probably should have used the bathroom before I started this. So now, in a better head, I'm going to go into this fight the way I was planning on to initially go into it. So there's no funny business. I hate that I even have to say it, but I don't feel like I have to. But, you know, just throwing it out there because there's always new people that join the channel right so let's fight this guy i still feel like he has a zip strike up there's no hidden items over here let's just cut to the chase and watch watch his name be chase is this the day <laughs> is this the day can you even imagine saying cut to the chase and then the dude's name is chase daryl that's not even close Jolteon. I knew he'd have a Jolteon. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So I didn't say Jolteon, but I was guessing something similar to it because the other guy had a Flareon and I thought he'd have electric types. So the Intimidate's not really that useful here for Jolteon. And it would have been pretty good for Galvantula, but Gushers is pretty set to clean this fight all on her own. Unless, unless that Galvantula has a grass type attack. That's something that's possible. And that's really scary, because then Brooklyn dies as well. <clears throat> well, there's a couple of things I can do. I can use Protect right here to feel them out. But in the case that I do that, there's a chance that they boost their stats, and that could cause me way more problems than I need right now. But I can't really recall a thing that Jolteon learns that would boost its stats. And I can't really recall anything that Galvantula would get either. Maybe Nose Pass Rock Polish? But in that case, I don't really care. But why would they use a grass type attack on Brooklyn? It's a rotation battle. Don't ask questions. Let's go for what we call Protect. With Gushers. Can I protect over and over and over and over and over and over and over again? Is that a thing I could actually do? Or does it carry in a rotation battle? I'm actually curious, because if that's the case, I could just protect stall for 20 turns. <laughs> Not that I need to. I'm just curious if that's a possibility. Let's protect with Gushers. Yeah, it shouldn't matter who I do. Right? Let's protect with Gushers. I just want to feel them out. What are you going to do to me? I'm scared. <laughs> Please don't boost your stats. Don't make me regret this. Pin missile. Oh, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> um, now we're going to do protect with you. This will tell me a couple of things. It'll tell me if you're allowed to do this. Yeah, okay. That doesn't confirm, though, because it could have been a 50-50 either way. All right, why are you using pin missile? <laughs> you're lessening your threat level to me, which terrifies me in several different ways, because what if you're just toying with me like this? Please don't use a grass type attack like energy ball. I can't use my berry, keep that in mind. Gastro acid. All right, that's not gonna be useful for them right here. Hmm. All right, we have to use earth power. Um, Surf, I guess, would have been fine too, but earth power is super effective against Jolteon. We weren't quite able to take out the Galvantula in a single hit, which does kind of terrify me. <sighs> well, we attacked, so I'm going to use protect with Brooklyn again. Yeah, I just want to feel him out. Maybe Galvantula is going to bust out a grass type move. It's always possible. Watch this thing use rock polish, which I don't actually care. Now that's a problem for him. <laughs> for yeah, yeah, because that's not going to hurt Gushers, but it hurts all of his Pokemon except Nosepass, and that'll even kill off 
the Galvantula. So if I protect, Galvantula dies to the sandstorm, Galvantula the threat is gone. <laughs> is that actually what's happening here? You're cute, bud. Daryl, you made a crucial mistake, my dude. <laughs> Goodbye, Galvantula. All right, that's good. That was the only threat for me because these two Pokemon here can't learn any Grass-type attacks that they would have or anything that would be able to drop Gushers on her head. So in that case, we'll just use Earth Power. We'll take this down to Sturdy and be able to one-shot his Jolteon when it comes in. Yeah, I'm feeling good about this. Rock Slide's fine. Yeah, there's nothing they can do that's going to kill Gushers from this point. Really solid lead. I'm happy with it. Yeah, and that's it for Jolteon. No, it passes. Non-existent. Thunder Wave doesn't work. Goodbye, Jolteon. Very good training and preparation for Gushers' battle that lies ahead. Because there's only one more thing for us to defeat here on Route 13. And that is the first of the three Swords of Justice trio. Being that Cobalion that we saw last episode. Because, according to my rules, I have to defeat the Swords of Justice the moment that we get to them. I can't go ahead and do it later. I gotta do it right here and right now. So, I'm scared because I've actually seen a couple people in my Discord server lose a Pokemon, or several, to this Cobalion as well. And that was actually one of my concerns as well. Uh, I was talking last episode about how Gushers should be able to just drop it on its head one shot, and I was going to fight it last episode, but I didn't, and there was a reason for that, and that's because Gushers wasn't quite level 45, and I wanted Gushers to be as high a level as possible for this fight, because there is no guarantees here. It will outspeed me, and it's, it's possible that Sacred Sword gets a critical hit and potentially kills Gushers in a single shot. And if that happens, then Brooklyn does die as well, and I don't really know where I go from there. Probably Marcus. Marcus might even be the better option with high jump kick, but that's just not something I'm going to risk. I think Gushers is my best bet. But I need to prepare for it to use Sacred Sword. Now, Bypass is any stat boosts like defense that I raise, so that's not something that I can think about doing. But I need to think if there's an item that I could give right now that would help us take a hit or maybe make sure that we drop it do we have a ground gem anything that ensures that we get rid of it in a single shot we don't have a, we do have a ground gem i don't know if it's necessary but it would ensure that we do one shot it and i think that's my best item choice to give gushers but we need to prepare brooklyn for the worst case scenario here and brooklyn doesn't really have anything to do against cobalion being a steel fighting type so let's go ahead and check out our bag, check out our TMs, and see if there's anything I can prepare Brooklyn with that would help. Uh, Brooklyn can't learn Psychic, unfortunately, which wouldn't be super effective anyways. But is there anything here that Brooklyn could learn that would be super effective against Cobalion, or at least neutral, that would help? Can Brooklyn learn Will-O-Wisp? It might be a last-ditch thing to save himself. No, can't. All right. This is concerning to me. I actually have no idea what I want to do here. I could have... No, they're genderless. Um, or male. I don't remember. Either way. It doesn't really look like Brooklyn's... Yeah, Brooklyn's got nothing here. I guess we would just have to use Aerial Ace, which is... Let's hope that's not the case. Uh, Alright. I'm gonna hope that it doesn't crit. And if it does, that Gushers can survive it? Um... I'm kind of nervous here, but I'm really in his best position as I'm going to be in for this. I say we do it. I'm scared, but we have to take this Cobalion down. This is our last challenge for Route 13. Well, let's do it. Let's talk to Cobalion and get this fight underway. Time for the first of the three Swords of Justice! 
And that's versus Cobalion here on Route 13 in the Unova region. It's a steel fighting type, level 45. And I need your help, Gushers. I hope I didn't make the wrong decision in my item choice for you. It's a steel fighting type, like I said, and ground is super effective against it. I can drop it in a single shot, most likely. But just in case it's not the case, I need that ground gem to ensure that I deal enough damage to clear it. But it's going to outspeed me. I have 166 hit points on Gushers, and if it's not enough, there was nothing I could have done differently right here. Retaliate. All right, that's better than Sacred Sword. Even if it crits, I should live it. There we go. Earth power. With the ground gem, it's going to boost its power. Come on, take this Cobalion out of here. It might have been overkill, but it might not have been. We took it out. There we go. Nice work, Gushers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was necessary, but somebody will probably tell me. Either way, I don't think we were ever going to use that ground gem anyways, and rather be safe than sorry, don't you think? All right, let's go ahead and put uh, Carly up front here. Give, um, I guess we can give Brooklyn the experience share back. Just keep switching Brooklyn and Carly's experience share for now. Yeah, that sounds fine with me. Lead with Carly. Not that there's anything left for us to fight this episode, but let's make our way to the next city of the game, or town rather. Let's enter Lacanosa Town. All right. And Juniper and Bianca are here to ambush us and talk to us. They're like, hey there, Karma, what's up? How's it going? How was Route 13? Longest route in the game, huh? But Bianca used Fly because she's a cheat. Yeah, she's been here before, though, I think. I think that's the idea. But yeah, we have to go through here to get to Opelucid City. Before we go there, Juniper wants to tell us something. Tell both me and Bianca and tell us a bit of a story. I wasn't actually going to do this as I was always going to do it next time. But I guess we can hear Juniper out, see what she wants to say. And we'll see what the old lady wants to say. Can I go to, like, the Pokemon Center real quick? That's not going to happen? Nah, that's unfortunate. I wanted to go to the Pokemon Center. Juniper, my Pokemon are hurt. They're actually perfectly fine. But I lied to her because I don't really care about the big hole behind, like, <laughs> the giant chasm. That's one way to describe a chasm. There's a big hole back there. It's been there for, oh, enough. Two decades now. <laughs> it just happened to appear one day. It was created when a big meteorite fell from the sky. Is that how it happened? I actually never read this before. A scary Pokemon was inside of the meteorite. Was it a Jirachi? <laughs> or no, I think that was what Kiram is. Yeah. The Pokemon ate people. Things getting dark, bud. I forgot about that. It's fascinating. This Pokemon came and ate people. And Juniper's like, hmm, fascinating. <laughs> really? People died, Juniper. You should be ashamed of yourself. You hear this, old lady? Absolutely unfortunate. You got anything to eat? <laughs> That's all I think about. I tell you what. Anyways, we're done with Juniper and Bianca, I believe. But we're not done in Lacanosa Town, because before we can leave this city, or this town... Yeah, I remember the story. Yeah, you told me about it, I think. <laughs> I didn't pay any attention. I don't need to know, Bianca. I got better things to do with my time. Will you let me go, please? <laughs> this is unfortunate. I have things to do. People to defeat. Pokemon to save. My Pokemon have not died since all the way back in the Charged Stone Cave. I'm proud of myself. I probably should be talking. You know, we got Drayden coming up. And we got a pretty scary fight before we leave town. Which is what I'm mainly concerned about here. Right over there with you. We're going to do that next time. We have to fight Zinzolin. And Zinzolin's actually a pretty big threat because I believe it's a double battle with uh, Shane. Not Hugh. My bad. <laughs> um, it's a double battle with Shane, Zinzolin, and a Grunt, I believe. And the Grunt isn't necessarily... Oh, we'll talk to her in a minute. I'm curious. But the Grunt's not necessarily a threat to me. Zinzolin is. I believe Zinzolin has a Weavile and a Crobat. And I don't care what the Grunt has, something, probably a Golbat or something, right? But it's scary because I don't really have a pair that I can lead with that I can take down Crobat and Weavile fairly safely with. A lot of people might be saying, well, Catherine and Marcus work great. And that's what I was con considering initially. But since it's going to be a double battle, Discharge would hit both Shane's Pokemon and Zinzlin and uh, the Grunt which would weaken Discharge, and I don't know if it'd be enough to take down Crobat. 
And then Weavile comes out, and I have to switch to Marcus. And I don't get to switch when they send it out, because it's a double battle with Shane. It's a multi-battle. So I don't get the chance to switch. It's like playing on set. Meaning I'd have to switch Marcus into whatever Weavile has, and that's pretty deadly. And the same goes with every pair I have. I can lead with somebody to take out a Crobat, but then I'd have to switch and put that other Pokemon in danger against Weavile. And that's not something that I'm really wanting to deal with right now, but it's the next thing we have to do. We don't have any other choices here. And every pair has a bit of a struggle here against that Weavile, which does concern me quite a bit. But that's for me to find out and deal with in the next episode. Assuming he even has a Weavile, of course. But before we end off this episode, I want to talk to this girl. She can tell us the story about all of her gym badge, and I think it's a cool thing to look back on. We look back at the basic badge. We got that with just Lucario and Oshawa. We got that Sade Elusive. It's been a long time. It has. We have the Toxic Badge, Sade Elusive, Trixie, November, and Sonora. It has been a while. Isn't that so cool? And we got the Insect Badge with Sade and Elusive Dieden for that badge. And we got... Trixie November and Sonora and Catherine. Catherine and November are the only two left from the original six. Sade, Elusive, Trixie, Sonora, they're all dead now and out along with them. It's, it's tough to swallow, but we get to look back on our adventure and it's really great. And here we have Gushers and Lout joining the team for Elisa. November and Trixie still there. And Sonora had passed, but we added Marcus to the team there with Catherine. It's so cool to see because, like, the order they're in is their pairing. Because that's how I order them in the party, right? We got the Quake badge flawlessly with Gushers and Lau. And then Lau died right after. And Trixie died not long after that. And then the Jet badge. Last badge we got was with Marcus and Catherine. Carly. November. Gushers. And Brooklyn are one of our more recent additions but yeah we've been through a lot in this adventure five deaths and we are approaching the seventh gym we have a lot of land to cover here coming up we have the village bridge route 14 i'm guessing it's called route 9 opelucid Verizian. drayden drayden could be the end of this challenge as sad as it sounds he's a very deadly gym leader and we don't really have much to take him down with other than carly and that's a scary, scary thought, but a lot can happen between now and then, and like I said at the start of the episode, only time will tell. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, a like is so much appreciated. It helps the channel out so much. Help us reach that like goal on the side of your screen. And if you're new to the channel and you like weblocks like this or just Pokemon challenges in general, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of all future episodes for this series and the channel as a whole. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.